Well, I'm Chris, and this is my automotive wiring from scratch, part two, wiring the charging system up. So this is a 78 Danson, and it comes with an internally regulated alternator. If you have an externally regulated, you're gonna have some type of voltage regulator here on the firewall somewhere, like a little box. I highly recommend that if you're building a car like this, you get rid of that stuff right now. You don't need it. This appears to be wired exactly like a GM3 wire. We have an exciter, we have a voltage sensing. This is so simple. All it does is connects right there to right there. That's it, that's your charging system. But you do have 118 gauge wire that runs back to the key switch to excite the alternator. So let's draw a wiring diagram and come out here and wire this thing up. So alternators are gonna have a threaded stud on the back. That's where your charging wire goes. I call it the lug. All this needs to do to charge the battery is run that straight back to the battery if you wanted to do that. So it's all gonna depend on your battery and alternator location. If they're right next to each other under the hood, then go ahead and just run a wire like that. There's nothing wrong with it. I've seen cars like that from the factory. So on the Datsun, the alternator and battery are not next to each other, but there is something in the middle and that's the starter solenoid. So this is our two gauge thick battery cable going straight to the starter solenoid. If you want to do things a little neater like the factory does, run that lug 10 gauge wire, the same place the battery bolts at the starter solenoid. 75 amps is the highest output alternator you can run with 10 gauge factory wiring. So does that make sense? You can run it straight, that's fine. It's charging the battery. But this way also we have a 10 gauge connected straight to the battery, charging it just the same way. So on your alternator, you need to figure out where is your exciter wire position and where is voltage sensing. And the voltage sensing wire is white and the exciter wire is blue. On a GM three wire alternator, you have positions one and two and one is the exciter and then two is voltage sensing. So it's a little bit confusing, but you have to figure this out 100%. So the voltage sensing is the critical wire and the one you have to understand, it's gonna tell the alternator when to charge and when to stop charging. If it doesn't stop, it's gonna keep charging your battery and I don't even know what happens. It might catch on fire. So figure out voltage sensing and this is the one that you can run back to the lug right here, 12 volts, it's all it needs. So I have some wiring videos where I talk about do not jump the voltage sensing wire right there. That's because that car has a factory dash ammeter. So the 280Z does not have an ammeter, it has a voltmeter and notice the charging light. Typically 10 gauge, run a red wire. I like to run white because that's the GM colors. Get your voltage sensing hooked up, 100% has to be done. And if you feel like you can hook your exciter wire up, so this just needs 12 volts on from the key to excite the fields and get the alternator to start charging. So if it's not hooked up, you have to gas it a little bit. I've seen them come in at 1200, 1500, but some alternators will say 2000. So you rev it up to 2000 and the alternator kicks in or starts charging. You'll usually hear it go, Burp! it'll chirp the belt. So if you wanted to instantly charge, hook that up. I just found it easier. Just hook that up. I highly recommend that you wire the exciter up because on these old cars, you may not be thinking, just go start it up one day and you're gonna be running your battery down because you forgot to kick in the alternator. It's happened to me plenty of times. For the exciter wire, we're going to the ignition switch and you're gonna to have to identify the accessory position. So your color of choice, but I run a blue 18 gauge wire. It can be fatter. You can always run thicker wire. That doesn't hurt anything except your bank account. So this is how you're gonna wire it up. So even if you mess up and you get one backwards, you just take it off and you move it. But these are the wires necessary for this to start up and charge instantly. Now, if you wire the exciter up to ignition on with the key, it can back feed and keep your car running. Like after you turn it off, it's still running. All you do is run out there and hook your battery move that wire over to accessories. And for some reason, if it's still doing it, you're gonna run a diode in series and the diode pointed to the alternator like that, if it doesn't shut off. So the factory adds a dummy light that has resistance to keep it back feeding. So we're not doing the dummy light or diode in this video, but once we get the car started, we'll talk about it more, not in this video. This is the actual plan that we're gonna go out there and put on the Datsun, let's go do it. So a lot of times with wire diagrams, you see the voltage sensing loop back to the lug and they're using two red wires. It's actually a white wire that's voltage sensing on the cars I work with. So we're going to run it white. So I've been thinking about making custom wire sets like this and putting them on eBay. Is that something that people would buy? Would you want to wire your car up like this? 
So this is the exciter wire. It can be 18 gauge. So we got 14 gauge wire. When you run into an issue where the heat shrink is too big or too small, just cut that blue thing off or whatever color it is. Cut it like there. Nice. Beautiful. So here are all the wires needed for the charging system. We're gonna wrap these in purple. Exciter wire, 18 gauge, charging wire, 10 gauge, and voltage sensing, 10 gauge. So we are wiring straight to battery hot. You have to understand what you're doing or you can burn your car down. Notice we have the negative terminal unhooked from the battery. This is connected straight back to battery, but we don't connect it back up here. So what you do is you run it to the battery wire on the starter lug. So yeah, you're gonna have two wires sticking out, wired like this. In the future video, when we do the fuse box, we're gonna put a junction block right here. So that way you only have one 10 gauge wire running there, but there's nothing wrong. Just add another one. If you don't want two of these, you can put two 10 gauge wires in a number six terminal, stick them both in there, make one crimp and have double wires coming off. That's representing the fuse link. That's where you would fuse. Let's get it on there. They're wired like that so that you can see them in the video clearly. The charging lug ran back to the starter. You could run this wire back to the battery terminal, connect it right there if you wanted to do that. So then the smaller terminal is gonna go on the alternator lug or stud. So then the stud, we also put the voltage sensing wire and then this is gonna plug into voltage sensing on the alternator. So now our exciter wire this goes through the firewall back to the ignition switch. So then we plug this into the exciter position. It's under the voltage sensing on this alternator. So we're creating our own custom harness is what we're doing. So on the charging system, we only have one wire going into the dash coming off of the battery right here, joined and then wired up to the alternator just like the diagram. Take a close look at it. We're wrapping it up in this purple. In the next video, it'll be wrapped all the way through the firewall and this one will be wrapped up better. That way we're able to see the different circuits side by side. So our exciter wire through the firewall and hook it up to accessories on the switch. See the A for accessories. So notice we have IG left for ignition. And R, that is for our ignition system. And we're gonna be wiring that up in the next video. So we'll also tape them up in their colors through the firewall and under the dash so you can see how the different systems branch off from the ignition switch. So the next video, we're gonna be doing the ignition system. It's gonna be wrapped up in red and hooking all that stuff up. Charging system in purple, starter motor in yellow. So I apologize, we're not gonna see it charge in this video, but we will probably in part four when we add the fuse box. It's wired up correctly, and even if you got one wire backwards, you just move it around. We'll test it all out at part four when we do the fuse box. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.